guys, welcome to another video, Purple Political Talk here. And today we're going to be doing a video on Joe Biden's best case scenario in the 2020 presidential election. So we're going to do a prediction considering Biden's best case scenario. So a best case scenario is a little bit hard to define because, yeah, of course, it's the best the candidate can do. But the best case scenario depends on a lot of different factors that we do not know if they're going to happen or not happen. So... As of right now, I would say a Biden best case scenario would encompass the following things. First of all, the COVID-19 pandemic completely goes downhill and everything gets a lot worse. There's a lot more of deaths and a lot more cases, which really would hurt the Republican Party, therefore um, helping Joe Biden in the presidential race. And honestly, that is a big possibility right now, considering that, generally speaking, since the second spike of cases have come into the United States, the COVID-19 pandemic has gotten a lot worse and a lot more serious. So what I'm going to do to talk about this prediction, I'm going to start off by filling in um, our map like I would in my regular prediction as the beginning map and then make the alterations to where the safe states need to go since it's going to be a different type of scenario. And honestly, this election does depend on a lot of things. And the way it's going, Joe Biden is looking like he might win by a big margin, um, comparatively to recent history, where the biggest margin was a 2008 victory for, um, uh, for Barack Obama, where Joe Biden was actually on the ticket. So, this is going to be our starting off map, and um, actually the state of West Virginia as well, I forgot to fill that in. So, which states from the Republican column will actually downgrade into a contested column in a Joe Biden best case scenario. I could easily say states like Alaska and states in the deep south like Mississippi and South Carolina, along with states like Missouri as well. These states, I think, in a best case scenario for Joe Biden, will move into the contested column. Will they go all the way and flip for Biden? We'll see and we'll talk about them later. So those are the states that I think Donald Trump will lose grasp of in the, self, um, in the safe column and go into the um, contested column. So what about the Democrats? Are they going to have any states that actually go by bigger margins and go into the safe column uh, in a best case scenario for Joe Biden? I think yes. I think mostly in Colorado and Nevada. These two states are fastly trending Democratic. Both states rely a lot on suburbs for the Democratic vote, along with the inner city vote, which there is actually somewhat uh, a lot of. And in the state of Colorado especially, and Nevada as well, you have a big population of Latinos. And these are Latinos that consistently vote Democrat. If you guys know about the Latino population, is that they actually vote kind of a little bit differently. So there's a group of Latinos, um, and I think a, a majority, they vote with the Democrats. And then there's a group of um, Latinos, especially from the ethnic groups of Venezuelans, Cubans, as well as some Puerto Ricans that vote with the Republican Party. So that is one thing we must know. And the the uh, the biggest the majority group is the one that votes in Nevada and Colorado for the most part. So Joe Biden easily could um, bring up his margins with those Latinos there. Um, with the suburbs, that might bring them up to a safe margin. And all these different factors that yeah, impact these races, I think, would help Joe Biden out in these two states to put them into the safe column. So now that we have our initial map, let's go on and fill in our lean, likely, and tilt states. Let's start off by filling in our likely states for the Democratic Party. In a Joe Biden best case scenario, there is a lot more likely states than one might think. States like Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, and then the normal states like um, New Hampshire, Virginia. At this point, I would say even Arizona would go, all of these states would go into the likely column for a Joe Biden best case scenario. So I think generally speaking, um, Joe Biden does very well this election. I mean, only with winning the in a best case scenario with the states that are in the likely margin and the safe margin, he already won the presidency. Of course, there's going to be more additions as we go on and fill in the map. So let's start by going and over about the state. So with the state of Arizona, Joe Biden has a somewhat big base there because he's a moderate candidate. And considering the fact that COVID-19 is a big issue in, uh, in the state of Arizona, um, because it's in the Sun Belt, and that's one of the states that actually has been the hardest hit of COVID-19, especially during the second wave. A lot of these voters are not afraid to not vote um, with their party. And we saw that in the Senate race in 2018. And we saw it even get close in 2016. 
Joe Biden, honestly, is one of the best candidates for Democrats to flip in Arizona, just because he is somewhat moderate compared to present-day Democrats. Um, and just the fact that he easily could gain some Latino support, which is some um, a, a big percentage of the Democratic electorate in the state of Arizona, as well as the suburban vote. So, I mean, Joe Biden does very well with these groups. And in a best-case scenario where he outperforms what he was expected to, um, I think easily with the effects of COVID-19 and other big issues that um, impact the state of Arizona, and just his his manner of being moderate really helps him out, and I think would go, in the best-case scenario for Biden, easily goes by 6 to 10 points, which is a lot considering um, it went for 3 points in 2016 for Donald Trump. And the Rust Bowl, I'm going to talk about the Rust Bowl right now, is a very similar area when it comes to best-case scenario for Biden. These are areas where COVID-19 wasn't as big of an issue. Yeah, economically, it definitely was, but when it came to health crisis, yeah, there's some cases here and there, but overall, I mean, the second wave wasn't hard hit, and these states are rapidly recovering with their economies. Um, I would say, honestly, that Joe Biden just have very good appeal, and in a best-case scenario, he would take, for example, in Pennsylvania, West Pennsylvania, the area where most of the working-class voters reside. And in Michigan, he would um, do very well with the African-Americans in Detroit and other suburbs and other smaller cities. I think Joe Biden is a good candidate in these places, and he would honestly um, outperform the Democrats in 2016. And honestly, in a best-case scenario for him, I could see him winning in the in the Rust Bowl easily around 5 points to 15 points, anywhere in that margin. I think honestly, Michigan would be, probably be the biggest blowout for him in the, uh, in the Rust Bowl in his best case scenario minnesota is also a state that's a little bit tough to predict in the best case scenario for joe biden we definitely know that it will go probably in the likely margin but telling um in the way it would go either like lower so like five to seven points or even higher like 10 and 15 points is a little harder considering that the state has had a lot more influxes of conservative vote and the state is a little divided because there's some issues regarding police um, brutality i mean br police brutality is an issue or it is an issue, but um, it's the abolishing police that's become the biggest debated issue. In Minnesota, that is a big issue, and Joe Biden, that's something that might hurt him and even and like stop him from gaining too much voters, but he'll still win by at least six points. And the last two states, Virginia and New Hampshire, both these states were for Hillary Clinton in 2016. And both these states have solid Democratic bases, which are constantly growing. Virginia is mostly made up of suburbs. Um, that's essentially what the state of Virginia is, with some rural areas here and there. Considering that Joe Biden is um, massively outperforming um, Democrats in these suburbs, as these suburbs are a lot more Democratic, and considering there's a lot more suburbs here, in a best-case scenario for Joe Biden, he could easily win around 6 to 7 points in the state of Virginia. And in New Hampshire, it's a similar story. In New Hampshire, it's more of a small-town feel. And there's somewhat um, a lot more older voters in the state of New Hampshire, which really does help Biden because Joe Biden is massively improving with the older vote. And that is something Democrats need to start looking for. Um, and the Democrats, one reason they might have lost in 2016 was because the Republican vote for, for the older votes was a blowout. I mean, they lost a big amount of the older vote in 2016. Since New Hampshire is a big state that has a lot of older people, older folks, um, it easily is flipping towards Joe Biden or he actually st retaining, but the margin of victory might be a lot larger than it was in 2016. So those are all our Democratic likely states. Let's go on to our Republican likely states and fill in the states by their margin. So Republican likely states, I would say, would be states that we downgraded like Alaska, um, Missouri, Mississippi, and at this point, South Carolina. These are the only states I see going um, for the Republicans by a likely margin around 5 to 15 percent in a best case scenario for Joe Biden. So, I mean, definitely states like Alaska um, um, and South Carolina would be a little bit more close than Missouri and Mississippi. But these states all have interesting manners of why they're actually moving into those columns. So in Alaska, it's actually a lot more close than people may think. And the Alaskan pol um, politics is very interesting. So in the state of Alaska, there's a big third-party presence, and Alaskans are not afraid of voting for a third party. So, I mean, generally speaking, um, the third party this time around is not going to be as a big thing as it was in 2016 because, I mean, Joe Biden is somewhat more popular than Trump, and then 
Trump has been able to gain his fans as president. But in Alaska, um, th- there's a big anti-Trump movement there. And considering the fact that this, um, there's a lot of polling that consistently um, shows um, Donald Trump ahead by just a couple points, we could say that the state of Alaska, of, as we know it right now, could be going around anywhere from 5 to 10 points, I would say, at this point, in the best-case scenario for Joe Biden. Missouri is the state that is often um, undershadowed when it comes to states that could become competitive. So the state of Missouri has two major population areas with a lot of Democratic vote in St. Louis and Kansas City. So those areas, especially St. Louis, has a lot of African-American population. And that honestly really helps Joe Biden. In Missouri, they also have a lot of older vote, which really goes to Joe Biden. And it's a very developing state, and it's growing quickly. The Democrats might be able to gain back some of the support they had in Missouri when people like Claire McCaskill were serving in the U.S. Senate for the state of Missouri. So, the state of Missouri is a state that I think, honestly, if Donald Trump starts um, doing a lot worse than he is currently, and just the way the trends are going, I think he's going a little bit downhill. Joe Biden could easily come here and still get close. I mean, with these likely states, the other party is able to get close or narrow up the margins, but not necessarily win. Missouri is one of those states, and I think Joe Biden could get close, but at the end of the day, Donald Trump has a very solid grasp on that state. And on the state of Mississippi, it's African-American vote. So the African-American vote is a big part of the uh, Mississippi electorate. And honestly, Democrats, if they do well, I mean, which they have in the past, in the Deep South, especially under the Obama elections, um, the state of Mississippi could easily go into a likely margin, probably still go by anywhere from 10 to 15 points for the Republican Party, but narrowing down the margins is good. And this shows that um, probably in the future where minority populations are growing all across the nation, that the Sun Belt, especially the Deep South, which has been Republican for it, it consistently over 50 years, it might be able to flip um, s- um, sooner rather than later all for the Democratic Party. And South Carolina is the last state. So South Carolina is an up-and-coming swing state, I would say. And there is a big um, African-American presence in the state of South Carolina. Joe Biden did very well with the African-American voters in the state of South Carolina. And considering they make a very big part of the um, of the Democratic electorate in the state, if Joe Biden can pull up those margins with African-Americans, he should be fine and probably get narrowed down the, mar- the race, even to anywhere from 7 to 15 points, which would be good. So those are all our Republican-likely states. Any best-case scenario for Joe Biden. Now let's go on and move over to our Democratic lean states. So... Honestly, Joe Biden does have some uh, consistent support in a lot of these states. And in a regular scenario, I would say these states are anywhere actually in the lean column all the way down to the tilt column. So in a best case scenario for Joe Biden, I would say states like Wisconsin, states like Florida, states like North Carolina. These states I would consider in the um, lean column for Joe Biden. In addition, I would also put Nebraska's second congressional district in the lean column for the Biden campaign. So... The thing here is that these states um, and the districts, they're currently in a very um, uncertain spot. So I'm going to go through and talk about each one and why they would fall into a lean margin in a Biden best case scenario. So I'm going to start with Nebraska's second congressional district. This district is historically been one of the most swingiest districts when it comes to presidential elections. So it's an interesting district just because of the fact that there is a big Democratic base there. But the fact of the matter is they don't often go out to vote. So most of the Republican vote, which there is a somewhat large amount of, go out and actually vote in the district. So what happens here? There is a lot of progressive Democratic vote, which if we know, I mean, they only go out to vote if they have a progressive candidate. Obama was somewhat progressive, so he won the district one time. And Bernie Sanders um, was leading in polling in the state if he was um, going against Donald Trump. And I think, honestly, Joe Biden, he, he could probably win here and narrowly. Um, I would say in a lean margin, maybe like two to three points. Um, but I think he would win here just because it would be very high turnout like some of the minorities that live in that district. So going on to Wisconsin. Um, the state of Wisconsin is a state that currently is probably going to narrow up. But I think when the rest of the Rust Belt could easily go by likely margin, I think Wisconsin will go by a lean margin. I would say anywhere from three to five points in a best case scenario for Joe Biden. 
And considering the fact that the state of Wisconsin is a state that has somewhat been trending a lot more Republican with um, some more conservative voters, and especially with the economy. In Wisconsin, a thing they really value is the economy. And since a lot of people could argue that Donald Trump has been able to create a lot of good economic growth in the, in the Rust Belt especially, I think that really does help him in the state of Wisconsin. So Joe Biden might not win here as big of a margin in like in the state of Wisconsin, um, but or never mind, like a state like Michigan or Pennsylvania, but it is still a somewhat large margin of victory for Joe Biden in the state. North Carolina and Florida. So these two states are pretty similar, I would guess, when it comes to the the presidential election and a Biden best case scenario. So these states right now are pretty much on thin ice for either party. So I think Republicans are on very thin ice when it comes to the state of North Carolina. And I mean, easily, if African American turnout is high, which in a best case scenario for Joe Biden, that certainly would be a fact. Um, and considering that the Democratic governor of the state is become very popular just because of the handling of COVID-19, Joe Biden could easily win here by three to five points in the best case scenario. Is it very likely? No, because historically, or, or recently actually, um, in modern um, historical elections, the state of North Carolina if it has gone to a Democrat, like in 2008, it only goes by less of the anywhere from like zero, like less than 1% to like at max two points. So that is a state to watch out. But I think honestly, if Joe Biden um, performs very well with African Americans and other suburbs, he could easily win here by three points or more just because of the fact that there's actually a very growing economy and a very growing population of younger voters that are influxing and moving out of some states like California, moving into states like North Carolina that are growing tech markets. And last is the state of Florida um, for the only states for the Democratic Party. And the state of Florida, I would also put it in the lean column. And the state of Florida actually has a lot more Trump support than people may think. But that wouldn't be a thing considering COVID-19. COVID-19 is being a very big issue in the state of Florida. And honestly, it's become one of the biggest hotspots in the United States. Considering that the uh, Republican governor has done absolutely barely anything to actually try to contain the virus. Yeah, he's tried, but all the attempts have failed. A lot of the Floridian voters, they are saying that they don't want Ron DeSantis. And people um, associate Ron DeSantis directly with Donald Trump because they're Republicans that have similar ideals. And honestly, that really must um, might hurt Donald Trump here. So in a best case scenario for Joe Biden, the state of Florida might easily go into his um, column by around, I would say, any for anywhere from two to five points. And this is a state to watch because if coronavirus improves, Donald Trump has a nice chance of victory here. But if it keeps getting worse, it could even go into the likely column. So there is actually no le um, lean states for the Republican Party in this map, I would say. So we're going to go to the tilt states for the Republican Party. So the Republican Party is going to have somewhat of a hard election in a Biden best case scenario. I would say uh, it, the only state actually or district they would win in a Biden best case scenario would be um, Maine's second congressional district and by a tilt margin. This district is very conservative and there are very big groups of conservative voters there. And I would honestly say that um, just considering the fact that Donald Trump has some um, um, appeal um, to these voters in since they're r mostly rural areas. Um, in the state of Maine's second congressional district, and he's been leading there constantly. So, in a best case scenario, I think he will narrowly be able to pull it out, but so Joe Biden will get really close. So, the rest of the states on the map that are currently not filled in are going to go, in my opinion, um, and just what the polls are showing and other um, sources of like uh, other like um, for uh, forecasts um, and other um, indicators showing these states might even flip in a Biden best case scenario. So. Right now, this, these states are Iowa, Ohio, Texas, and Georgia. So I'm going to go through them and talk about each one. So first one is the state of Texas. This is one of the most controversial states. Will it flip? Will it not? Um, what margin will it go by? What, what, what would be the deal here? So with the state of Texas, in a regular scenario, I think there is no way for the Democratic Party to flip the state. Yes, it is constantly becoming a lot closer. It is a state with demographic trends that are going very, very um, in favor of the Democratic Party. But, I mean, in a regular scenario, Joe Biden probably won't be able to pull it. But if Joe Biden has all the momentum, COVID-19 has been an issue in the state of Texas. So, if he can get um, all the um, COVID-19 fixing problems 
um, all those people on his um, campaign. And he could get the Latino turnout very high. The state of Texas could easily flip in a um, Biden best case scenario. So here, um, one of the major things that's going to happen is, first of all, COVID-19 worsens a little bit. And Joe Biden is going to have to come up with a plan um, to show that he's ready to take office, even in times of COVID-19, and to um, how to flip and change the situations with COVID-19. So, I mean, here, essentially what I said, Latino support, um, and I think some suburban support would be good for Joe Biden. And considering he's getting some of the um, Republican voters are a little bit more liberal, um, this could definitely flip in a best case scenario by a tilt March 8th. I feel like the states of Iowa, Ohio, and Georgia are, are in very similar votes, but I think the most similar are, are, um, is Ohio with the other two. So, I mean, I'm going to talk with Ohio and Iowa, and then I'm going to talk about Ohio and Georgia together. So, Ohio and Iowa, I think they have very big similarities um, when it comes to best case scenario for Biden because they have Republican bases at, is, uh, at their core. But there is a large, or, uh, um, large amount of African-American support, and th there is a lot of Republican bases, but considering the fact that a big majority of them are somewhat um, cause, um, moderate Republicans, they could easily flip towards Joe Biden, especially African-American turnout is high. There is certain areas in these states where their African-American population is very high, especially in Cleveland and Cincinnati and Columbus in Ohio and um, Des Moines in Iowa. And Georgia is very similar to these states because most of the Democrats uh, or the Republicans in Georgia are moderate establishment Republicans. By no means Donald Trump is an establishment Republican. So some of those um, voters might flip to establishment Democrat, in this case, Joe Biden. And I mean, if African American turnout is high and he's able to get out all these different groups of voters that usually do not go out to vote, Joe Biden probably be able to carry the state of Georgia, probably by around 1% or a little less. So this is my best case scenario map for Joe Biden. It's going to be an interesting thing to watch. I mean, the Republicans would be doing horrendous in a uh, worst case scenario or best case scenario for Joe Biden, which honestly would not look for good for them. And I imagine if this is the presidency, what would the Senate and House maps look like? Um, nonetheless, I mean, Joe Biden has a lot of support. And the regular map, I would say, would be kind of this map, maybe um, except the tilt states for the Democrats. And honestly, at this point in time, um, the Democratic Party has been able to grow their support and politicize some of these issues um, in their favor. So this is the map for best case scenario for Joe Biden, 412 for the Democrats, 126 for the Republicans. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a huge thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and turn on post notifications to get notified when I post my next video. I hope you enjoyed the video, and goodbye.